Hi, I'm Tom Scherer, Agricultural Engineer with North Dakota State University Extension Service. Today we're talking about electric backup sump pumps for houses. And everybody that has a basement probably has a, some kind of a, a sump pump already in it, uh, a full basement or even a split level house. This is a submersible pump. It's 120 volt, pretty typical. It's cast iron construction. You can see we've had it in water. This is a check valve so that when the pump shuts off, water in it doesn't flow back through the pump and it goes out the discharge pipe. The backup sump pump is hooked into the same pipe, but this is a DC powered uh, pump and it's got a discharge and its own check valve here and its own float control. So this is the float control for the uh, primary sump pump and you can see that when it gets up here, the water level in here would turn on and the pump would uh, start pumping water and it drop down and it would shut off here. On the backup sump pump, you can see that the float is higher up. So if the water got up here and this one didn't turn on, once the water got up to this level, this one would turn on and then the uh, backup sump pump uh, would start to pump and discharge the water into the same uh, discharge pipe to outside. Now since this is a DC powered pump, it needs a power source and especially when you don't have primary power to the house if you lost it during a thunderstorm or, or for some other reason. So the battery is what provides the power. And here we have three different types of batteries. This is a uh, sealed lead acid battery. Uh, it's designed for this operation it's, it's rated in ampere hours. You can see this one is a 40 ampere hour battery, same type, it's a sealed lead acid. This is a 75 ampere hour. The ampere hours refers to how many amps you can draw for how many hours uh, to power a, a, in this case, a sump pump. The other type we have, this is a combination. Now, most cars and vehicles have a a battery that might just have terminals like this and they're rated in cold cranking amps. And what that means is they're designed to put out a lot of current in a short period of time to start the engine. The other type is a long purpose one. These batteries are designed to put out current for a long period of time. So there's a different design to them. Now this is a combination. This is a marine deep cycle battery and you can see it has two types of outlets. This is your standard connectors for in a starting the engine, say, on a boat. But this would be where the wires to supply all the electronics on, on a boat might be. And the thing about a deep cycle is it's got both. It can be used to start the engine, but it also has enough capacity to run all electricity on the boat, especially in emergency situations. Either one of these types is fully acceptable to run with a backup sump pump. Uh, this one, though, you can see has water in it and it's not a sealed lead acid. This is a lead acid battery, but it's not sealed. It's pretty typical. Every six months when you're doing a check to make sure that the battery's in good shape, you'll have to check the water levels because uh, batteries will evaporate water and it can drop and you'd have to look in the maintenance manual, but usually they want you to keep the water above the plates and you can see them in the hole. So that would be another check you'd make every six months just to make sure the water levels in the lead acid battery are appropriate and, and up where they belong. And you fill it with distilled water. Uh, you don't use it off the tap. Uh, distilled water is the best. Going with the battery then, you gotta have a special charger. This one is a commercial charger that came with the sump pump. It's designed to provide a trickle charge to keep this battery charged for long periods of time. Because quite often, these might be in your basement and be sitting there for six months without running. Or it may not run if you don't lose power, but the battery needs to be maintained at full voltage so that when you do need an emergency, it's ready to go. Now, a typical charger that you might use with a car looks like this, and you got the clamps in that. This would not be acceptable for this situation because these are not designed to be hooked to a battery and run for long periods of time. And we're talking six months to a year or a year, two, two years. These are designed specifically to trickle charge these and keep them full. 
This one is designed for charging just battery in a, in a short period of time. This is a typical plastic sump that you might find in any hardware store or home supply store. You can see it's about two feet deep. It's got cutouts here where you could, the drain tile might come in. Now typically this would be, the top of this would be flush with the floor. So you can see the pump is going to be two feet below the top of the floor typically. And the sump and backup sump pump would fit in like this. And this would be down below your uh, floor. So about this point is about floor level. So they, just to give you some idea, and then you got a, if you got a full basement, you're lifting it another eight feet up to remove the water. Since the battery provides all the power for the backup sump pump, it's important to check it periodically. I would recommend about every six months. In this part of the world, we get snow melt, so the early part, uh, mid-March, uh, would be a good time to check your, your backup sump pump to make sure it's, the battery's in good shape. Uh, the other time might be after first killing frost. Uh, if we get fall rains, uh, a lot of times we can get a lot of flow into our basements because there's no uh, plants using the water. So you want to check the battery. So in this case, we got it connected to the charger, and we have a, a relatively inexpensive uh, voltmeter here. And what we want to do is just check the voltage. And in this case, you see it's reading around 14. That would be, that's with the charger on. We can unplug the charger and then just check the voltage. And you can see it's about 13.7, which is a very acceptable range. You want it uh, well above 12.7 when it's uh, sitting there with no load on it. But the other important uh, measurement you have to make is when there's an actual load on it because even though the battery reads a correct voltage, when you put a load on and start drawing current, it may actually be quite a bit lower. Uh, the charger is unplugged and now we're going to put a load on it. We're putting water into the sump and we'll measure the voltage under load so that we can see if the battery voltage stays fairly constant and doesn't drop too much when it starts to pump. So you can hear the sump pump turned on. It's running, it's pumping water. It's dropped to about 12.7. That's very good. And that's what you would want. If it drops down to 11.5, then your battery might be getting weak or old and it might be time to consider replacing it. One of the questions we get asked a lot is, how much actual protection will your backup sump pump provide, such as battery powered? Now we set up a test stand in the lab here and we set it up just like you would from a normal house with a full basement. And we measured the amp draw on the pump and we found on this particular DC pump it draws about 10 amps. So we tested it with this 40 ampere hour uh, battery under continuous pumping. Now that's the worst case scenario. You've got so much water coming in that the pump is just running continuously. This provided about three and a half hours before the battery ran out. This 75 ampere hour battery provided about six and three quarter hours of protection. So if you take 75 divided by 10, you get seven and a half hours. It takes a little, it's a little less than what the rating is with this motor. This one is an 84 ampere hour battery and it provided about seven and a half hours of protection. Now if you had bought a more, a bigger battery that had about 120 ampere hours of protection, that would have provided about 11 hours of continuous pumping. But most of the time, some pumps don't pump continuously, so the second test we did was we set it up so that the pump only ran once every four minutes, which is still quite a frequent uh, pumping interval. And the, the smaller battery here, the 40 ampere hour, provided about 32 hours with the pump running every four minutes for about 15 seconds. The battery is actually able to recover a little bit uh, between times. The 75 provided about 60 hours protection or about two and a half days or so of this intermittent pumping. And this one provided about 68 hours. So it's almost three days. Now, if you bought the 120 ampere hour battery, that would provide about 96 hours or almost uh, four days worth of intermittent pumping before the battery would go out on you. So in an emergency situation, uh, if your battery is going low and you've been out that long and it's pumping quite a bit, you can always go out to a vehicle in an emergency situation. You could substitute in a 
a battery, a 12 volt battery out of a riding mower or out of a boat or out of a pickup or a car to give you that extra protection you need. I'm Ken Hellebang, agricultural engineer with the NDSU Extension Service. Tom went through things uh, in our lab uh, relating to the backup sump pump. Now we're in a home and we're going to actually look at an in-home installation. So here we have the sump that uh, Tom was talking about. It's down below the floor level. We have our main sump pump at the bottom. Uh, in this case, rather than having the backup sump pump uh, sitting beside the main sump, this installation has the sump with the battery power, the backup sump pump, sitting a little bit higher than the primary sump. And then we also have the same check valve and connections that we saw in the laboratory. In this case, the, the power comes from this battery that's sitting in this protective case and frequently they will be in some type of case so that we're protecting the battery and we're protecting the floor in case there's any acids that come out of that battery. In the lab, we saw the trickle charger was separate from the uh, actual battery case. In this case, here is the trickle charger and the way that this is installed, the line or electric line comes from the backup sump pump, comes into the trickle charger here, and then in this case we have now the switch that goes back down uh, and is adjusted so that the float is higher than that primary sump. So if the primary sump would fail, then it, that switch would lift and activate and turn on the, the backup sump pump. The power is coming from the battery that is in this case and we'll just lift off the lid so that we can see here the battery sitting in, in this case. This is a deep cycle uh, battery marine type that we discussed uh, previously that has the posts where the power comes from the battery to operate that backup sump pump. And then the trickle charger has another cord that goes over and is plugged into the wall and we're constantly trickle charging the battery. So it's important, uh, as Tom was indicating, for us to verify that that whole system is operating, check the water level in the battery, uh, check the sump to make sure that that backup sump pump switch does turn the pump on, uh, make sure that we're keeping the charge uh, adequate. And in this case, uh, they have a light readout that will indicate the level of charge. So this will then uh, provide some backup protection for the home in case the primary sump pump uh, fails or if the power goes out that this electric DC powered backup system will then start operating and keep your basement and home dry.